Chapter 361, Please Turn Around, Baby. Lu Xu intended to look for them on his own. Based on their records, they did not sell any magical stones or weapons, which meant they had them all in their own pocket. At that moment, Lu Xu felt that his power gave him greater responsibilities. Just watch, people. He was the one who would take care of the dangers. Honestly speaking, although Zhang Yutong told him not to reveal his power and military ranking, Lu Xu only intended to run some errands for his team and steal goods when necessary. With his humble character, he would not be that noticeable in a group of arrogant geniuses. But even Ye Ting and Shi Xue Jin did not expect that Lu Xu had won his reputation in the Heavenly Network through the running fights in the capital. Regardless of his aptitude, his ability as a Class C already spoke volumes of his hard power, the top tier under the Heavenly Kings. In addition, in the running fights, he even had the guts to fight back against over a hundred veterans, it was an impressive act. It might be an exaggeration to crown him as the first man below the Heavenly Kings, because there were a few Class C freaks in the network, who were double trained in cultivation and power awakening. However, at the very least, Lu Xu was above average among the Class Cs. At first, Hao Ji Chao attributed his failure to the prohibition on the use of his flying daggers. But after second thoughts, Lu Xu's speed could still very well defeat him if he failed to fatally wound Lu Xu with his first move of daggers. As a result, Lu Xu was soon highly respected by all students. Everybody knew that the veterans held him in high regard and that he managed to escape the chase of over a hundred veterans. Moreover, at the present moment, Chen Zhuan's stand was clear. Whenever someone suggested an investigation, Chen Zhuan would insist that he should wait for Lu Xu. Chen Zhuan's lack of courage was obvious. He would never dare to complete the mission without Lu Xu, and thus no one took action. Then, the team wanted to follow Chao Qingxi as the new leader, who was at the peak of Class D and with military merits on her record. After the urban survival, the geniuses had relinquished their airs and learned humility. Since Chao Qingxi had both experience and power, the team was expecting a response from her. However, she did not express any disagreement with Chen Zhuan's plan to wait for Lu Xu. Therefore, be it playing cards or sleep, Everyone was waiting for Lu Xu's return in the past two days. That made Lu Xu even more mysterious. With so many veterans discussing him every day, it was an open secret now that he was a Class C. The first Class C in the Daoyuan class. A major. He was the epitome of the word invincible. At that moment, Lu Xu was deliberating about his convenient plan of stealing something after the extermination of all their targets. After all, he could not carry it too far in his teammates' presence. Take what he could and leave the rest. Since he had made a wise guess that the target's stronghold was concealed underneath the market, Lu Xu was tempted. Would a person die only when his neck was twisted 180 degrees? Maybe not. If the purple golden gourd was used directly on top of someone, it might not break his neck, but would surely sprain it. Hiding in a private place, Lu Xu retrieved his gourd from his seal of lands. Ever since the flying dagger went in, Lu Xu had respectfully changed its address from the head-twisting gourd to the purple, golden gourd. As for whether he had remembered the name of the dagger correctly, Lu Xu was still uncertain. If he could not, wouldn't it be a shame on him? A scan with his magical instincts revealed that the filth on the dagger had already been removed, and it was hovering in the gourd glimmering with celestial sparkles on its blade. Instead of making it more powerful, the sparkles felt more like a connection between the dagger and Lu Xu himself. However, although he had not mustered enough courage to directly call out its name, Lu Xu felt an expectant stir in his heart. Needless to mention how mighty the master in the investiture of the gods was, no one could stop him if he wanted someone dead. Of course, Lu Xu believed that it was partially due to the master's power as well. According to the legend, he was the fiery spirit of the sun and the son of the elf emperor Jun, the prince of the elf race. He was omnipotent. He could slay his opponents effortlessly without even a weapon. 
Lu Xu was well aware that the lethality of magical weapons was directly proportional to the wielder's power. In reality, it would not make sense if a class F weakling could hack a class A with some supreme weapon. It was not realistic either. But. That was still awesome. It was the master's treasure. Holding the purple, golden gourd in his palms, Lu Xu's face was full of anticipation. Success or failure was dependent on the moment. With all sincerity, he whispered, Please turn around, baby. In the next second, there was a disturbance in the gourd. Suddenly, the flying dagger turned around inside. Lu Xu was utterly confused. I told you to turn and you really turned in the gourd? What the hell? Lu Xu did not buy it. Please come out, baby. Please kill, baby. Please dance, baby. Please say something, baby. Please, please screw yourself. Lu Xu was frustrated. The dagger completely ignored him except for the first sentence. He wanted to control the gourd and the dagger. But now, they did not seem to listen to him. Sure enough it was an unreliable gourd. At that moment Lu Xu had the urge to smack the gourd on the floor, but did not really want to. Stuck in an awkward situation, Lu Xu totally had no idea how to lure it out of the gourd. He could see it, but could not use it. What happened to this world? Even flying daggers had become so cunning? So what now? To confront the 21 people head-on? Looking at the market below from a building nearby, Lu Xu was hesitant. He was uncertain about the circumstances down there and reckless moves were never in Lu Xu's dictionary. He had confidence, though, about how to locate the targets precisely. If the head-twisting gourd was still functioning, he could make use of his celestial powers to pinpoint his rivals. When he bought it at the black market that time, he sensed spirit chi waves welling up the gourd when Li Dian pronounced Yu Yunping's name. And now, he needed to confirm whether the five missing people were really underneath the market. Lu Xu opened his digital memorandum, Pan Hong Yang. No reaction. Zhang Jinglin. No reaction. Damn it. Even the original functions were no longer working? This was his newly developed killer weapon, and it could not be any more unreliable. Chapter 362, A Class B Idiot To tell the truth, Lu Xu hoped Lu Xiaoyu would send Anthony to Tongguan, so that he could have a look at the situation underground without having to be there himself. But Luo Cheng was more than 200 kilometers away, way outside of Lu Xiaoyu's controllable range. Furthermore, Anthony should not be too active. When his identity as friend or foe was unclear, the Heavenly Network would probably perceive him to be neutral, and Ye Ting would definitely not tolerate the presence of an unruly Class B expert. What if one day Ye Ting set a trap and slashed him? He was more suitable of the title the first assassin in the East than the first expert in the East. Lu Xu was playing with his gourd on the rooftop, with despair on his face. No matter what he said, there was no more reaction in the gourd, even if he called it baby. Could it be a bloody duplicate passed down from Li Dian's ancestors? If so, could you please make it more real? What was with turning the dagger around in the gourd? Could it not sleep well on its left? Actually, now thinking about it, Lu Xu could not take all the advantages himself. Although he was already a Class C, the mission itself had hidden threats and Lu Xu would certainly not risk his life in such situations. He still had to go home in one piece to look after Lu Xiaoyu. At that moment, he heard a calm voice from behind, Lu Xu, who's your baby? From Lu Xiaoyu's distress, plus 666. Lu Xu turned, astounded, why are you here? I thought I told you to stay at home. Lu Xiaoyu sat down besides Lu Xu at the edge of the rooftop, I came to look for you, of course. Anthony can transport me via the earth. No one will notice that I'm here. Anthony arrived back in Luocheng yesterday. Bored at home, Lu Xiaoyu made use of Anthony's skill to travel silently hundreds of miles to Lu Xu's side. She only needed to be careful of surveillance cameras, and she was damn good at it. 
However, she got lost in Tongwon, which doomed her plan to give Lu Xu a surprise. But Anthony solved her concern. Every piece of dirt could serve as his eyes and ears after a wind swept through the town. It was not a commonly seen ability among the Earth-type metahumans, as very few had reached the same level as Anthony. As soon as Lu Xiaoyu found Lu Xu, she heard him repeatedly calling something baby. Lu Xu explained everything about the gourd in a light mood. Afterwards, Lu Xiaoyu asked, I thought you'll need to cup one hand in the other in front of your chest, bow, and then say, please turn around, baby? Lu Xu was stunned. So many rules? He stood up and took another try. Placing the purple golden gourd in front of him, he made a deep bow, please turn around, baby. And then, the dagger turned again in the gourd. The hell. You wanna come out for a dance. Lu Xu's face darkened. At that moment, a person hastened secretly towards them from the east. Judging from his cap and sunglasses, he was either an idiot or trying to hide his identity. Lu Xiaoyu was surprised, why is he here? Lu Xu could not recognize the man without Anthony's shared vision, who? The Mianchi factory director. Lu Xu froze, didn't the other team wipe them out? What is he doing here? I left once I got the stuff last night. I don't know what happened afterwards, Lu Xiaoyu's eyes widened innocently, I did whatever you told me to do. As for what she took, she had not informed Lu Xu yet. Everything was stored in their house. Then, the director sneaked into the market, knocked on the door of the innermost room and was allowed to enter. The person inside the dark room deliberately took a glance around to ensure there were no followers. There's some sort of connection between the two markets, Lu Xu mused, could it be the man had escaped Mianchi to seek sanctuary here? Checking against his memorandum, the director's name was Lu Daz while the person in charge of the agricultural market was Lu Dakuan. Eh? Could they be cousins or siblings? Also in that moment, a group of seven geniuses, who were tasked to suppress the Mianchi black market, were hurrying towards them, and one person was sticking up his nose, as if catching smells. What a unique power he had awakened to. Sensing that something was up, he called to Xiaoyu, send Anthony down and rob them if you have the chance. After that, he quickly went back to the inn. Probably the Mianchi team was completely ignorant of Lu Da's meeting with Lu Dakuan, and the twenty-plus metahumans below. From their perspective, the director was their only target. Their victory was certain. But the reality was that he had reinforcements. Unwilling to send them into danger, Lu Xu directed Xiaoyu to take advantage of the commotion. If the two sides really engaged in a fight, no one would have the spare time to care about cash and safety boxes, and that was the chance that Lu Xu was talking about. In a few minutes' time, he would bring his team and join the group below to kill all their enemies. Thus, who would know that something was missing? Absolutely perfect, Lu Xu thought excitedly. The director climbed down a narrow ladder and started weeping the second he saw Lu Dakuin, my dear brother. Everything in Mianchi is gone. My men, my money. Everything. We were robbed by an idiot at first, and then we were encircled by the heavenly network. His brother Dakuin stared at him in bewilderment for a long time, which idiot? You let an idiot rob you? A class B idiot. Black shadow, earth-type metahuman, with a white matted bracelet on each of his wrist. The idiot forced us to giggle for thirty minutes and could punch a hole in my foot with one grain of sand when he's displeased. It took him a long time on his way there to understand that the shadow was at least a class B. His brother was a class C and he knew class Cs could never have such power. However, on the materials given by the heavenly network, Lu Dakuin was only a class D. Lu Dakuin was a sensible man and he knew better than to confront a class B, his smooth, peaceful life should be attributed to his low-key personality. Lu Dakuin gathered himself, did your pursuers follow you here? He was worried that his younger brother might lead the heavenly network here. But Lu Daz pressed his lips tightly, as the only thing on his mind was to live. His concern was verified at the sight of his brother's expression. 
With a slap on Lu Da's face, Lu Dakuan's voice was irritated, Damn you. Do you know how much effort I have put into this place? Everyone else shot frosty stares at Lu Daz. If the Heavenly Network had found out about their location, they would need to flee for the rest of their lives. How many? Lu Dakuan calmed himself down. 7. Mid-class D students, Lu Daz replied. Kill them all and run northwest tonight. Pack up, brothers, at Lu Dakuan's command, a tinge of ferocity suddenly appeared on everyone's face. Magical stones in flannel bags and cash in sacks were collected in the center of the room to be carried by a strength-type metahuman, the rest were in preparation for a killing spree. At that instant, a black shadow, giggling, rose from the floor. Lu Xu had instructed Lu Xiaoyu to find an appropriate time, which he referred to as when they were busy fighting. But to Lu Xiaoyu, any time was a chance. Who could defeat her class be Anthony? Thus, was this not a good chance since they had carried everything out? Lu Daz suddenly started laughing wildly, which startled his brother quite a fair bit. <laughs> laugh. Everybody bloody hell laugh. <laughs> totally in shock, Lu Dakuan threw a smack on the back of his brother's head, hush. But soon his attention was diverted to the shadow. Who the hell was the one over there that had the guts to come in? Wait a moment. What did my brother say? Black shadow, earth-type metahuman, a white matted bracelet on each wrist. The idiot forced us to laugh for thirty minutes and could punch a hole in my foot with a grain of sand if he's displeased. <laughs> laugh. Everybody bloody hell laugh. <laughs> Lu Dakuin trembled. Didn't he say only the Heavenly Network was here? Why is the Class B expert here too? White sand gathered in front of the shadow, very good. Then, Anthony took away everything in the center of the room, wasting no time. Staring at the empty floor, Lu Dakuin was about to cry, but it was not the time to mourn. He would rise again with his power. Laughing loudly, he led the entire group to the surface. But at that moment, they heard a pounding sound on the door. The director's face was ashen. <laughs> they are here. Outside, the geniuses were deeply disturbed by his laughter. Does he have a trump card or something? Why is he so happy when he was about to die? Chapter 363, Bodyguard in the Darkness By right, for someone who had painted a target on his back, and whose men were all dead, he should be trembling in terror. But the director looked like an emotionless beast who feared nothing. What the hell are you laughing for? Solely based on his laughter, those unfamiliar with the situation might be expecting a class A master hiding behind him. Honestly speaking, it was really a mere misunderstanding. The director himself did not want to laugh as well. The geniuses exchanged startled looks. Last time, the man's laughter tricked them into thinking that there was an ambush, which turned out to be a false alarm. Obviously, that was a scam. But the question was, how could you use the same trick again on those heavenly warriors? Laugh. Laugh harder. You'll be crying later. This time, the geniuses did not fall into his trap, burst in and kill him. Their chase was not smooth either. Some were injured along the way and were still sulking. As for the other side, Lu Daz's people had made up their mind to kill their way out. Initially, the Heavenly Network had arranged for Lu Xu to deal with them, which should not be a problem at all. But who would expect that the Mianqi team would run into the Tongguan Black Market, the most naughty of all, by chance? Lu Dakuin was aware that there were seven Class D experts from the Heavenly Network outside. But with more people on his side and his ability as a strength type class C, they did have a higher chance of breaking out of the encirclement. As long as they could flee to the Great Northwest with their identities well concealed, they would be safe and in trusted hands. In the past, there was no shortage of people trying to persuade him to join some metahuman association for a good life outside. But Lu Dakuin declined the offers as he preferred building up his own power in Tongguan. 
Although he still objected to the idea of being someone else's follower, but he did not have a choice now. As for Lu Xu, he sprinted to the inn, which was only a stone's throw away from the market, and started shouting, Come down. Quick. Someone's here to steal our mission. Clever trick. It was a bitter hatred that someone intended to deprive them of their ladder to Class C. Chen Zuan and the rest hurried to the stairs, whereas Chao Qingxi directly jumped off from the fourth floor, with her sword and Lu Xu's spears in her hands. Chao Qingxi had already arrived downstairs before Chen Zuan got to the door. Sometimes one's mentality was hard to change even if you had special powers, for instance taking the stairs to go down. In the next second, Chen Zuan and the rest immediately dashed back and threw themselves out of the window. Four floors was really a piece of cake for them. After everyone gathered downstairs, Chen Zuan glanced around in the darkness, where's Cheng Chiuqiao? Cheng Chiuqiao's face darkened at his side, Brother Zuan, I'm here. His face was seriously dark. Chen Zuan directed his gaze to the source of the voice and drew a startled breath, during the day I never realized you were so dark. Not bothered to waste any more time on him, Lu Xu smacked him on the back of his head, he's your bodyguard in the darkness. From Chen Zuan's distress, plus 666. From Cheng Chiuqiao's distress, plus 666. Are you saying my face is coal black? Chao Qingzi tossed the spears to Lu Xu, go. Taking his spears out, Lu Xu started running at the top of his speed. Lu Xiaoyu had already messaged him about the situation in the room and alerted him of the presence of a Class C, who appeared to be of the strength type. Lu Xu was confused after reading the text. Had Lu Xiaoyu begun her move? So fast? But there was no time for concern. Leading the six people behind, Lu Xu hurried on his journey. If they were too late, the Mianqi team might. Before they reached the market, they saw the seven students running in their direction, with a group of people chasing and shouting behind. <laughs> Stop there. Since when was the black market so arrogant? I thought they were a low-profile group. Lu Xu was puzzled. In fact, it was not Lu Dakuan's original intention to chase them. But since they had lost all their money and magical stones, his evil plan was triggered at the sight of the seven standard swords in those students' hands. Abroad, one single sword could be exchanged for a huge sum. Unexpectedly, though, one of the students awakened to his power and fended them off for a while. When the Mianqi team saw Lu Xu and Chao Qingxi's group, they shouted, Run! They were all aware that they could not win against the class C man. But at the same instant, Lu Xu suddenly sprung into the air, his body bending like an iron bow, propelling his two spears towards Lu Dakuin and his people. Lu Dakuin was immediately alarmed. He himself was a strength type metahuman, but it seemed the young man's ability was not below his. He knew he could never fling the spears so hard that it blew up a big cavity in the ground after piercing through a man. In a split second, Chao Qingxi dove herself into the crowd. In the blink of an eye, her sword had already slit open a man's throat, the blade glistening in the darkness. Fast and elegant. But it was actually her first kill. She had only killed skeletons before. Chao Qingxi had seized the right opportunity. When everyone was disoriented by the spears, she slipped in like an assassin, reaping lives like a ghost dancing under the moonlight. Chen Zuan and the other members were dumbstruck. Their collaboration was almost seamless, as though any external help would be unnecessary, awesome. Chen Zuan, brilliant. Chang Chiuqiao, bravo. The Mianqi team was in shock, are you not going to help, are you cheerleaders? Before the Mianqi team could react, Lu Dakuan suddenly turned. <laughs> Run. Lu Xu. What was so funny? Am I a joke or have you lost your mind? Lu Xiaoyu had not told him the truth, so he did not think along that line at all. Thus, his first reaction was, fine, you may run as you wish, but why the hell are you laughing? 
As a strength type class C, Lu Dakuin could actually run away if he decided to abandon his men. But before he could get far, a strong built man suddenly emerged from the corner. He stood there and lowered his waist, lifted his arms, and threw a punch. In the next instant, a tiger sign sprung out from his back. With a loud growl, the punch swept across the streets, yanked the leaves off the branches, and rolled forward with an unstoppable power. Lu Xu let out a sigh of relief. He should have seen it coming. In the central area, how would Li Xiao forego an opportunity of babysitting? Lu Dakuin was surely dead. Chapter 364 End of Assessment Although Li Xiao looked like an amiable person most of the time, his fists were unconquerable in real combat. With no time to dodge the blow, Lu Dakuin had no choice but to bear it with his folded arms. But strength type metahumans were not that fragile, as enduring attacks was their forte. Lu Dakuin knew he was not going to survive the night. Hence, the devil in him compelled him to drag someone to hell together. With blood welling up from his throat, he mustered all energy left and dashed towards Chao Qingxi. But before he could come near enough, everything in his vision slowed down. It was not an illusion in his last minutes. It was the girl's true power. Even the world changed as time passed by. Perhaps nothing could defy the rule of time. But what if someone could master that power? It might not harm him if he were uninjured, as he could use his own strength to guard against element-type powers. After all, the girl was no master of time. But now everything was too late. He could only stare as the effect of time was unlimitedly magnified on himself. As if in a slowed-down recording, a sharp sword perforated his heart effortlessly and emerged from his back. From a bystander's perspective, Lu Xu had already realized how terrifying Chao Qingxi's power was. No wonder at that previous time he perceived it more like a rule. Of course, Chao Qingxi could only reduce Lu Daguin's speed to the same level as hers when he was injured. If he were not, she would have been dead. Undeniably, though, it was an impressive skill. Moreover, how would she be like after her ascension to Class A? That marked the end of the student's assessment. Just when Lu Xu was about to greet Li Xiao, the latter immediately dashed to the market. Was he going to seize his spoils? The students followed him to the spacious basement, which was an altered bomb shelter, upon which sat the market. After the construction of the shelter, it was sealed by the government, and was later transformed into Lu Dakuin's secret base. It was a large space, with distinct traces of careful redesigning. The room was separated into compartments, in which beds were arranged neatly and tidily. Li Xiao almost flipped the entire room upside down, where is it? The geniuses had taken away the bandits' magical weapons, which were required to be surrendered. They knew very well that they were here for military credits, and nothing was important other than cultivation methods. But Li Xiao thought otherwise. He came for the money. How was it possible that such a sizable black market had no savings? Could they have deposited them in the bank? Unlikely. People like them would probably bring their money with them, or at least bury it somewhere. But now, there was nothing. Ill-tempered, Li Xiao was deep in thought on a sofa. Had it really been in their bank account, he probably could never get it. He pulled Lu Xu aside, why did you make the move before finding out where they hid their money? Lu Xu shrugged, I'm not strong enough. Besides, we would have to surrender everything found here. Bullshit, Li Xiao scratched his head, who knows how much money a black market has. I have the say whether to hand it up or not. Lu Xu cast him an innocent look, actually, I have the say. Lu Xiaoyu had been hiding underground all along with Anthony's help, and she left once Lu Dakuin's spirit was captured. In fact, it was a rare case for a Class B spirit to materialize, and Lu Xiaoyu already considered herself lucky to have one of strength-type mid-class C like Lu Dakuin's. Time to go home and count the money. With such a fortune, she could buy a big television, together with many TV boxes. One new box whenever Lu Xu hides one. 
The Mianchi team began the narrative of their story, many parts of which stunned their audiences. Honestly speaking, theirs was a real combat experience, killing everyone under the director. At first, many became depressed after their first kill, but who would indulge in remorse knowing that there was still someone on the run? It was precisely this kind of high-pressure environment that accelerated their growth. The moment Li Ixiao appeared, Lu Xu understood that there had been assigned a babysitter to each group. After all, it was a foolproof method to equip each team with a Class C veteran or above, who would lend assistance in times of danger and remain quiet otherwise. Judging from the time when Li Xiao showed up, Lu Xu believed that he would have gone to the market early for spoils if there were no Class C enemies. At the end of the day, the ultimate goal of the Heavenly Network was fast cultivation of those geniuses when their safety was ensured. Was the situation out there so serious right now? It did make sense after some thought. Nowadays, the number of remains in the country was constantly on the rise, which must be the same outside as well. Therefore, all practitioners would strive to be the first to reap the benefits. If the Heavenly Network veterans ran into trouble outside, new local powers would be needed to be substituted in at once. The battle in the cultivation realm was rather one-dimensional, as the losers always died. But, the queerest point in the Mianchi team's story was why they laughed. At a time of life and death, they still maintained their heroic spirits, as if death was none of their concern. If they weren't led astray, they could be considered real men, Chen Zuan exclaimed. Lu Xu's gut feeling told him that something was off. Mianchi's side laughed, and Tongguan's laughed too. Could it be something to do with Lu Xiaoyu? Li Ixiao left sullenly. He had expected to reap a good fortune there, but ended up getting nothing. He felt as if a piece of the puzzle had been hidden on purpose and disrupted the entire flow of logic. After a while, he came to a conclusion, he was not good at thinking. Now, all those who had witnessed Anthony were dead. Lu Xu was delighted about his new killer weapon and stealing tool. Li Ixiao called Lu Xu aside before he left, interested in an overseas trip? Lu Xu hesitated, overseas? Where? To do what? Remains, of course. According to a reliable source, a new remain is about to unlock. Mia Ting has decided to send me there, but I was wondering if we too, Li Ixiao grimaced. He would not take Lu Xu there had he not reached Class C, in any case. A weakling would only be a burden in a land filled with bloodlust. Chapter 365 It's Getting Windy Overseas? It was Li Yixiao's first official invitation to Lu Xu since the last time they talked about bringing Lu Xu to the remains for some good stuff. In fact, it was Lu Xu who had forgotten about that appointment, not Li Yixiao. In any case, the Salt Lake remain was so far away and now as a major, Lu Xu could visit any remain as he pleased. Coupled with the absence of new remains in the central area, the two had rarely brought up their plan again. But this time when the topic returned, it seemed they were going overseas. Until then Lu Xu was still unaware of where they were going. But based on Li Xiao's expression, it was highly likely the Heavenly Network had dispatched him there. Lu Xu was at a loss, why don't they send a class A there? They'll surely win. Li Xiao grinned, is unbridled use of nuclear weapons acceptable? There's a tacit agreement among organizations and we can't really kill them all, can we? Sooner or later the external cultivation organizations will have a class A too. Lu Xu nodded, the efficiency of the formation of the agreement was unexpected. It was understandable, though. Li Xianyi's last fight had aroused a storm on the global scale, as his act of killing a class B with merely one blow was way too scary. Thus, all organizations without a Class A had established a united front, there would be no Class A participation in foreign affairs. If not, they would join forces after the birth of their own Class As and launch a grand attack. Unless one could wipe out their seeds and side against all cultivation organizations across the world, no one would send a Class A. Could they be wiped out? No. Moreover, Nye Ting seemed to have no interest in waging a war but was purely curious about the remains. 
To put it frankly, those external organizations were both scared and unable to fight back, hence they could only start a unified protest. So as long as we get into that remain, don't we have the final say about how much we take from it? Li Yixiao was fascinated by his daydream. Let me consider it, Lu Xu did not choose to accept the invitation at once. Sure, no rush. We still have some time before it's opened, Li Yixiao left. Lu Xu's hesitation stemmed from his worries. If the reality was indeed like Li Yixiao's description, it would be perfect. But Lu Xu was well aware that it was not. In such a short time span, he had already encountered two foreign class B metahumans, Anthony and the one who could control flood peaks. Locally, there was not any opportunity to gain exposure on the real situations of foreign practitioners and metahumans, and even information on the Golden Foundation might not be totally reliable. But Lu Xu once saw dozens of user accounts with the Class B symbol on the Darkness Kingdom webpage alone. What about those who had not revealed their levels? Remains were commonly known as the party for world-class experts. They all had a rough idea of what to expect in a remain, so how could it be that simple? Indeed, Lu Xu loved money. But the question was could he get it? He himself did not have full confidence in surviving in a remain populated with Class Bs. He was not slower than any Class B, and could probably win in a 1 vs 1 combat situation. But his enemies had more people. After all, Lu Xu was not a rogue. He was merely an ordinary citizen whose biggest ambition now was to graduate safely and enter a university for practitioners. The school on the Beimang Remain was rapidly gaining strength, and its architecture suited Lu Xu's taste as well. He really wanted to visit there someday. Currently, however, he was going abroad to enjoy himself while his peers were busy training and studying. Lu Xu would like some more time to think it through. Up until now, Lu Xu had certainty of success in all his plans. But he had no such confidence in an overseas remain. Gradually, the group thinned out as other geniuses returned to the capital for mission submission. Those who completed their tasks were rewarded with the Class C cultivation method, Yin Yang Kinship of the Three, which was their greatest temptation for the entire journey. Unlike their original mindset prior to the progress report, the desire for fame and power, Nia Ting only used one and a half months to instill in them calmness and composure. Were the assessment and the urban survival test necessary? That was akin to asking whether standing still like a soldier and turning left and right every day was necessary in an army. One would only know its significance when its effects were seen over time. Based on the outcome, the training for the class aptitude geniuses had been successful. After everyone was gone, Lu Xu headed straight back to Luo Cheng. He had no need for the cultivation method, which Li Xiao had communicated to the superiors in advance. It was finally over. Lu Xu was suddenly relieved. On the train back to Luo Cheng, he saw the fields joining the sky in the far horizon, the clouds dangled low over the vast lands. In a courtyard along the Luhai Lane, in the capital, Nia Ting was studying his documents under a walnut tree, while Shi Xuejin was lounging casually in a deck chair beside him, reading his book. His pace was very slow. What took other people a few minutes to read would take him an hour in total. Next to Shi Xuejin was a stack of precious threadbound books, and he would get himself a cup of tea from the Zisha pot when he was thirsty. It was as if his sole interest in the world lay in the books alone. Nia Ting's gaze remained glued to the pages, if you didn't give that red fruit to Lu Xu, you wouldn't have to spend so much effort trying to figure out an alternative. When you are done, you probably won't have much time left. Sure Xue Jin smiled, I wouldn't steal something from a kid. It's fine. As long as I find it, I will be able to rest in peace. However, I'm curious about one thing. As someone who cares only about the grand picture, why do you pay so much attention to a kid this time? I can foresee that he may become an indispensable link in the entire situation, Nia Ting replied calmly. Li Yixiao isn't that dependable, Chen Bailey is too honest while aggressive, Feng Yeming is not fond of violence, and the other three are focused on their ascension. 
Meanwhile, I have to take the helm, but the Heavenly Network needs someone to take care of external affairs. Li Xianyi used to be the best suit, but sadly he shares a different ideology, Shi Xuejin's eyes twinkled, but why do you think Lu Xu can live up to that role? Speaking of which, do you think he will follow Li Xiao overseas? You sent Li Xiao there just to indirectly coax him into going. I'm afraid Li Xiao himself had no idea of that. Li Xiao will convince him, Nia Ting rose, his gaze turned to the walnut tree beside him. It was planted by his teacher, who had already passed away, and he himself was no longer the boy that squatted under the tree every day, as he waited for the fruits to ripe. Sure Shua Jin remained non-committed, Chen Bailey had broken free of the heavenly shackles. I'm afraid the day of the birth of new class A's overseas is drawing close. At that moment, the lush leaves and branches on the tree suddenly started swaying. Nia Ting sighed, it's getting windy. What does it mean to be happy? Cause it looks like we all don't know Glass half full or empty And we just put them on the show Try to look to the heavens